Amazing, isn't it? How people's views cross such a huge spectrum. He's finishes the new Delhi Alley through to I'd start him for England. The headlines in the newspapers today, Paul Hurst in the Times. My head's in the right place now. Rashford reveals mental issues from last season. Um, Chris Wheeler and Sammy Mockbell in the Daily Mail. Ton up Rashford heads in his 100th United goal to boost his World Cup hopes. And to Jeremy Cross in the Daily Mirror, ton, tons of fun uh, for Marcus, incidentally as well. And a weekend where we saw more headed goals than we usually do in the Premier League. Um, I absolutely loved Marcus's effort. Mm. The word boof came through my mind. A proper old-fashioned headed goal. Um, as was Kiefer Moore's, but I was less impressed with that uh, <laughs> down at, at the Vitality. Um, Sean, Marcus Rashford has been the, the, the subject of a year's worth of blather from um, uh, ill-informed fools and the top experts like myself, yourself and Danny. Um, it's actually, I think on a human level, I'm really enjoying him coming back to form because he's been through a lot and he's, he's a good guy. Oh, he is. There's no doubt about it. And we remember, I mean, most people can remember when he sprung on the scene, when he got his couple of goals in Europe, and when he did it, everyone, who's he? Uh, a lot of people didn't know anything about him. He'd sprung on the scene, and everybody wanted to know anything about him. And he had quite a lot it was quite a lot to take on when he was an 18-year-old. Suddenly there was this new young star. We want to know everything about him, and maybe he wasn't quite ready for it at that point. But... He obviously had potential. He looked strong as well. A very strong young man with good feet. Um, we weren't sure whether he, he looked like he had an ability to finish. Then we decided he couldn't finish. Then he drifted <laughs> off to the left wing. Then he, is he a centre forward? Well, he's not really. Is he a left winger? No, he's not really that. Then we look at the weekend and the ball comes in. Bang, gosh, he can hit a ball. Now, you might think that's daft, but I can't really remember him heading many goals. I, I, not, not that no, many. But and he's gone a, out of business, hasn't it? This was, really, a, it, this it, was an absolute yeah. bullet. This looked like a oh, centre beautiful. forward who, in the Alan Shearer mode who does this every week, and he, he isn't. But now he looks to have the complete all-round game all of a sudden. And it's only it's really not that long ago. You probably go back two months where people were still saying, well, maybe a month, even. Oh, don't know. You know, his England place could be in jeopardy. He's not a stick on, you know. And now everybody's gone, he's got to start. Undoubtedly. Well, I, I I hate saying I told you so, but I told oh, you so. Did you? Uh, you, you don't hate it, Dan. You like it. Yeah, I know. I do. I um. I had a. We should have a section in the show called Danny was right. Yeah. Can both I, take I, part. I, I, Great. Had, I had a couple of debates on obviously Jim and Simon's show about Rashford, and mm -hmm. Simon was not of the same opinion of me. I watched him come through, as you did, and um, I saw so many qualities. And actually, looking at his numbers. Over the years, they're pretty they're pretty comparable to a lot of other good wingers, stroke forwards, you know, the one mm -hmm. in three kind of area, which is what you'd want. Now, the debate of whether he plays wide or plays up front, that, that will always just be some different people's opinions. But very few players come on the scene at 18 years of age into the big get, the big club, a big club mentality or a big big club pressure and then playing for your country at a young age and, and don't have a bad spell. There's always a spell in someone's career where they 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 not fall off a cliff, but they 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 just drop down a gear or two, and they and they struggle for a while. I can think of it with so many players. That'll be the odd exception, I'm sure. Someone will pull me up on, but <clears throat> generally, there's always some some part of your career where you're going to drop a bit. After this was start. long. This was a couple of years, I would say. You go back to before the Euros. He was he wasn't in brilliant form. No, going but into he the still, Euros he, either. I think he. I think it's probably a, a season of really lacking confidence because mm. the other, the season before there were still moments there was still good and bad which was a bit like United so it wasn't really yeah. him it was more United you know United mm. get a great result with Solskjaer you think oh they've turned the corner then they lose silly games and everyone's down in confidence again I thought it was just the correlation between the team and, and the individual because mm. of their inconsistency but going back to the point he's he's a super talent and I don't think he's ever going to be a one in two and I, and I think sometimes playing wide is better for him because he's coming in and he dribbles with the ball well and he's got the game in front of him very hard playing when you're back to goal so I'm pleased for him as you are Dan and I think that he's yeah. a cert to go in the squad because he can play centrally well, hold, and hold on one second there let me stop you there if I may it would be so rude um, of course you know 100 goals for Manchester United you don't get those by being a bang mm. average player or anything like that but Danny now you have an opportunity here to make or ruin um, Marcus's birthday. Happy birthday, Marcus. I think he's 25 today. Um, my researchers haven't provided me with that. I've just worked that out for myself. Um, here's, here's a chance for you to ruin Marcus Rashford's birthday. Yes, he'll go to the World Cup. Would you pick him 
as be one of the players to play either side of Harry Kane. Given that, 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 that Raheem Sterling is now left back, apparently, we'll come <laughs> on to that. <laughs> um, I think at the moment I'd still be going Sterling and Foden or Sterling and Saka, but I, I wouldn't be definitive on that just yet because obviously Saka's just got a knock. But why would you, if you're Gareth Southgate, be picking your team now when there's still a couple of games to go and see how people are playing and flying. I mean, if Rashford gets another three or four in the next couple of games, for example, and he's and he's good and he's hot, and Sterling keeps getting played wing back. No, to be fair, Sterling will play no matter what because he's got that loyalty. But I would, I, with his confidence and his enthusiasm and his desire on the pitch at the moment, Rashford chasing lost causes against West Ham. Yes, the header was a great example of someone who's chomping at the bit to impress. I I think. Even if you don't start him, having him as a sub who's ready to come on and be a threat. Because pace pace and goals change games. You know when you have a, t- a player who's talented in your team, say like a Rashford, you've probably seen it many times, maybe at Liverpool now. What do you as players say to them or how do you help them or how, how do they get back what you know they had? I think there's a, there's a couple of aspects. What, there's the obvious stuff in terms of just being supportive and commu- good communication mm. around the training ground, especially if they're younger players, to just not get on top of them in training when you can see they're struggling, making sure that anyone who's becoming... There's some some senior players at clubs who can be bullies, and you just make sure you look after them in that respect. But the main job is the coach, and the coach's job is... I mean, the best example, really, I could give, not not for a prolonged period, but for a couple of months... Steven Gerrard, who, who obviously burst on the scene and everyone saw the talent he was, he was struggling. He had some off-the-field issues. Um, he wasn't himself. Even I, mean, I was rooming with him and stuff, I knew some stuff that was going on. And Julier was the one that noticed it, took him out the side, sat down with him, got it out of him, helped him with it. And then, you know, three, four, mm-hmm. five weeks later, put him back in. Now, that's a short version of what happened to Rashford, but the coach has got a huge responsibility in that respect. And I think there's no coincidence that a manager who's come in, who's got the stability, he's now going to be there for the foreseeable. He's backed him. He's put him in. He's let him go. He's just took, you know, he's obviously spoken to him and said, look, you're my man, because he plays him nearly every game, doesn't he? Mm. So I think the manager deserves some credit here, Ten Hag, for getting Rashford back going. He re- 